Hi everybody, welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So it's Thursday, I get the last slot of the week again. Um, busy week, I think you, you know, lots of you went out and saw Cohen last week. Where were you last week, Cohen? Uh, sitting bun store, okay. So tomorrow I get to get in the car again and I've got to go up to Basingstoke. So if you want to come and see me in Basingstoke store, we'll be there Saturday going over the new robust lathes we've got. So if you've got any questions, come and see me. It'd be lovely to see you all there. Frederick, you haven't got an excuse. You went and saw Carl and the pictures. I've seen the evidence. So you need to travel all the way down to Beijing. It's not far. Okay, so what we're going to do today, we're going to look at decorate now. Last week, if you came in, tuned in, we played with Crown Texturing Tool. I think we're going to go down. Let's have a look on free. Look, Carl So Carl was doing the questions. So probably one of those. Just going to bring the other one in. I've got both two. So there's two sizes we played with last week. Not quite good. Today, in reality, what we're going to play with, I can hold everything steady, is that. Oh, my God. That's tiny, isn't it? It's a really small. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to play with the Crown, sorry, the Henry Taylor Elf. So, just giving you a bit of a comparative thing there, how much smaller this is, a lot smaller. What does that mean? Uh, we can do more detailed work with it finer patterns. We're going to give you a close-up of it in a minute so you can see what it is, how it works, okay? So we're going to bring you in a bit more in a minute. I'll show you the cutters, how it all goes together. I mean, can we brought the camera into there? Let's have a playlet. So on here, we have main handle. Has brass shaft. In the end of here, it's tricky to see there's a little bearing. It's also actually magnetic. So if I put the cutter in, it holds in there nicely. Won't come out easily. I've got to pull it out. Out. Okay, so is that safety feature of that little magnet. And let's just slide up and down. We get to there. I've really got to give it a bit of a pull. So the brass shaft obviously allows you to sit it on the toe rest. We can change the cutters as simple as what I've just done there. And I think we're going to try. I'm going to try this now. I'm going to bring this in just for the aspect because I want something a bit closer to see those other cutters. So you've got two on there and there. There are three cutters you can use with this. There is a straight one, a bug cutter, which is in the middle. I have to peel this off, so the bud, a ball, a straight one. Okay, so you can get the shapes, those. Now, in reality, and I've used the right word, these are cutters. Why do I phrase them as cutters? Because these are a Dremel type of cutter. They are high-speed steel. They're what most of us would class as a rotary bear. They're a bit specific on what they've got. You can see up on here, they've got this little bit machined on. So the shank isn't dead straight. So I've got a magnet behind here, so I can just go up to there. There is like a stop point. If you go with a standard cutter, which is what I'm holding, there isn't a collar. That can cause problems. You need the collar so it rests on the bearing. If not, if I put this in and it hasn't got a collar, it's likely to disappear right down onto the bearing. Not any good. So you need to make sure whatever you're using here has got that collar. All right. Just going to bring our camera back out. I can change things around a little bit. All right. So... Last week, like we said, um, quite a lot of texture and stuff. Could probably, let's just see if we get on the overhead. You can see it on there quite nicely. Quite big pattern, though. What do you do today? A lot finer. A bit more detailed. So that can be nice. There's a couple of other tools I'm going to throw in along the way as well. So it'll be a bit more detailed shot, different things. All right. Now, again, this is something that I think some of you might have bought, never really played with, or picked it up and gone, oh, why, why did it do that? It can be a little bit disheartening at times. Again, with the crown tool I said last week, if you buy anything like that, get some scrap wood, something that's not too expensive, sycamore. I've got some of the tulip wood that we play with in here, or the popular, just easy to work with. Okay? Something that you can... Almost just make into shavings, have a practice run, try and memorize where you're cutting with it. That takes the most important bit. When you buy the decorating elf in the packet, let's just go standard kit. Give you an idea. We get that one, that, a brush. So you get a hog's hair brush, okay, like a paintbrush, but it has to be natural bristled. Very short bristled as well. This is your sander. And that's a weird thing for me to start with, isn't it? Then you've got, obviously, the tool, wooden handle, last stem. You get the ball cutter, drops in. 
and you get a DVD, an instruction, so you can sit down and watch it. And that's a great way of learning. Sit down, play a bit over, go practice, go back, have a go. Right. So there are ways of really getting into that. Right. So the basic kit, really good way of starting. Okay. Let me just set up things here. Go move things in. Colwyn's doing obviously questions and answers days on the computer. What have you got, mate? Hi, everybody. Um, yeah. So James is just asking: Does the Crown Mini texturing tool have a bearing? The Sorby one has a brass screw which has a limited life. Okay. And it depends on which one of these you go with. So the crown one and this will be one of the smaller texturing tools have, uh, let's see if I can get my arm back in there, three, I think, Cohen. That's the small cutter. It has a bronze shaft. Okay. It is worth, when this goes together, I put a little bit of oil on here. Something like the camellia I use to protect the tools can be good. I found wax is a bit sticky. Doesn't always help. But that literally goes in here. So, yes, it can have, but these will probably be a brass or probably a bronze shaft, I would have thought, if I read the manual. I bet you'll find it's bronze, which is a bit harder. The bigger cutters on the bigger tool do actually have bearings in. On these, why don't these have a bearing in? They can't get them in there, as in size-wise, for what it needs to support. So they've always done them with that size. The bigger cutter has bearings that are inside here. You can actually see probably on here that silver bearing. That silver line is the edge of the bearing. That's recessed into the cutter from the back. So the bigger one definitely does. The nice thing with the elf, two little bearings down in here. So it is bearing given again. So actually that adds a lot more support and allows it to go around. So the bearing part is quite an important part. Okay. All right. One more. Just um, just a message for okay, Maria. Cool. Uh, Maria, um, what I'll do is uh, if you can just email that question in, I'll direct that to Craig and he'll uh, answer that directly to you. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, logical things with this thing of the tool is position of where you have handle, as in up and down. Okay. So, hoping that I would play in and also around here. So, this bit. And this bit are all going to play a part now. I'm hoping with Colin's playing with the cameras as we get going, you're going to find that you've got front camera that will show you on there, which is two, which will allow me to drop the handle down. Overhead will give us, so this is going to show you this. I'm going to try and go over that a little bit. And then overhead will give you a scope of where we are here. All right. Trying to cover it. If I miss anything, guys, email them, shout them, let, let them know, and we, we, right, we'll see what we can do. One of the things I found, you can find videos on this sort of thing, but they don't explain where all of this goes. And it, it just makes it hard work to try and understand. Okay. So as we said, this is a little bit smaller, a bit more detailed. Now, there are a couple of other things that Henry Taylor sell to go with this. Um, I've got these with corks on the end because they do what they class as a splay tool which actually has almost a round bar cut an angle, and this creates a negative rate scraper. Best way to sharpen, diamond file. Other one, detail point tool. And to give you an idea of that, let's just put my hand in there because that comes up to a point. And again, they are you know, free flat. It's a bit like a traditional old point tool that Bill Jones used to have. A little bit longer on the points. So this is... Um, really a detail tool add nice precise lines better than we can do with a skew even colwyn skew you know this is a little bit finer this one all right so slightly different all right so we're going to use a couple of those as we go on so we're getting a live on we're going to start with that round code tool we're going to start with real basic stuff i can put my handle down low i need to play with the tourist just to come down so i can get into the middle beautiful than this code tool have a bit of go go juice, a bit more speed. We can use this a bit like your gouge. So we're just going to do a little curve in there. Back and forwards, we're working on that tulip wood. And in from the end, that nice shaving. We're going to come out to there. We're going to start real simple for you. So three little hollows. Keep things clean as well. Ball cutter, as we've said, drops in, goes down to that location stop. Most important thing with this, first of all, I've got to come back with the tool rest. So when I sit it on here, I've got enough gap 
overhand here. I want to get my fingers in a little bit. You have to lock it down. But also, obviously, support it. But you have to change my angle slightly. So your tool rest position is quite important. I'm cutting at about ooh, just above nine o'clock on your clock face. Now, with the cutter, we've got the ball one. I want to be using, ooh, if I look at the ball like I am now, it's probably about 10 o'clock on the ball. So if you can imagine taking that as a complete ball as you look at it visually, holding it in hand, we've got 12 would be the very centre. Coming back, I want to cut just off centre with it. If I push it in central and dead square, the ball's not going to go round. Especially if I come to there. You're just going to drag and make a line. The, that cutter's got to rotate for it to do the effect we want. So that does that. You're not going to make anything of the pattern. We've got to present it slightly off centre so the cutter rotates. So your best place you can actually start if you bought yourself one of these is doing exactly what I'm doing now. Get a feel of what happens if you turn the chuck over by hand, how that goes round. That's quite a good put. Even if I change my hand and I've dropped the handle down so we were higher, if I go into there, that cutter I can still make spin. I come lower again, can I still get it to go round? So changing this handle from square different angles, as long as I can get the ball to rotate or the cutter to rotate, it's going to give us a different effect. Okay. So lay bomb. One about 800 RPM. It's not that critical, but a little bit slower puts you in control. I'm going to start with my handle pretty much level with the tail stock. Push the cutter, hold it nice and firm. Okay. One. Gonna drop my handle down a bit. Hold it. Gonna come down lower again. There. Next most important bit. This brush. Make your abrasive paper. And I said, gonna start really simple. Just do that simple thing of what happens if we do those? What effects do we get? Now, I'm hoping you can probably say, let's drop this down. You can see your patterns we're getting. Okay, we've got three different shapes on there. If we run down to here, we've got a pencil at our rack up on there. Different patterns as we come out. Much longer down here, shorter coming in, square and nearer the middle. I don't think you can see those on there. Great, okay. So just by changing that, hand orientation will play a really important part of what you're going to get with this. And that was so simple just to do. I can't remove that camera back again so I've got access back into here. We can tidy up little bits. So we said about the point tool. This is great to give you a tidy edge up on here. Create a nice fine line. So I'm just really trying to introduce the stuff that we've got. I can come in from there. And come over and this adds if you like a nice bright line again things on here fingertips working nice and hard either side of that to stop things slide along that toe rest so i've got my fingers almost either side of the tool pushing on locking down gives a nice tidy bright line again we can do that brush just as your abrasor now, we started really simple, and that's what I want to do, get you into that habit of set it up, play around with your height. A little bit. Now, I'm going to wipe that off. And this is the beauty with this, that I can go from there. And if you think about it, I'm taking off about two millimetres of top to the gouge, if that, all the way across. Tip my thumbs pushing, got the bevel on, bit of clearance with my hand in behind it so I can grip down the torus, my thumb can push it forward, nice and controlled. Speed, we're back up to about 1700, so I'm going to do something exactly the same again, I'm going to play around, a bit more in the centre, I need to get the ball in there, same again. Handle's quite low to use this tool. Down here. 
nice and low so that tip of the slide tool is actually cutting just above centre but almost level with the axis of the light. One more, I should get one more in there. So again, just going to go over really what we've just done, get you to understand that basic setup, so easy. On, up to there. Get your tool, lost it, down in there. Where your position is. Now again, once the tool rest height can become quite important for this. A little bit low, on below centre. I want to be cutting with the ball cutter, just a bit above. Better lock everything off nice and firmly to there. Drop your speed down. Now, we said last week about using colour. We did discuss it this morning. Me and Carl had a discussion. Just takes that time to dry with some of this on this. So, you're going to there. On its side for that near the centre. Hold it. Let it do its work. You'll feel it feels right. It's going round. Handle. Going to drop down again. So, Trying to play with left hand where I can grip things. So I've dropped the handle down. Going to move the tool rest round a bit now. I want to come higher. So I've dropped the handle down. But I've also bring in the handle round towards my body in the front of the life. Nice and firm. Let it do the work. One more out on here. So this time I've got the handle really low. So run in. Just going to relax that and turn it off. Handle's right down here. So middle one. Stayed really level. This would come down a lot more. Trying to get that angle. Okay. Last little bit I'm just going to do on there. Clean it up. Let's have a quick look to see what's going on. Just going to bring this up, get to there. Colin's that look about right? Can you see? You can see that on there. Okay. Let's have a quick look. Go on, then, Mike. What have you got as your question? So this one's from Maria. Um, she was just asking. She said, um, "If the cut was above centre, would it grab or snatch, or just not rotate?" Well, that was above centre, wasn't it? All of that. Okay. Going to try and show you a couple of things. And yes, it can be like anything. If you present it wrong doesn't work if you get a snatch it can be quite aggressive if you present things at the wrong angle that can be off-putting um no different than we said with the crown tools last week best way to start is almost doing what i'm doing now um there's nothing worse than thinking i'm gonna get this home and go straight into a job you know nick that you had in the other week you you can go on youtube and watch the video you guys and i go how do you do that how do you get to that effect, okay? So this is your best way of starting. Start with something simple. Don't get too keen. Start with something, if you like, you're going to put on the floor as shavings or keep the little discs and go, how did I do that one? Record it, if you like. You want a long spiral, could you? Okay? So it's worth doing. I'll try and show you in a minute, okay? Uh, yeah, another one here. Edinator2000, if you drop that into the Woodworking Wisdom um, email and we'll get that answered for you off the top of my head i'm not entirely sure um, and wayne wants to know is there the temp are the drawings available to make the jig for cutting the wheels on your car that you've done a couple of weeks ago we could probably do something up i mean the jig if it, you're thinking about the tail stop thing it worked on the multi-head center um, i had a platform that a bit of plywood went into and then I used the bimetal hole saw to cut it out. It's not too tricky to do, actually, the thing. I think that's the one you're on about. I'll have a look, okay? Um, I will use a bit more. I've had a couple of guys come in and say, could you make the wheel with a hub? Like the centre one that I did, not just the actual going through. So I might look at that. I might even then look at, could we do a texturing effect on the edge of the wheel to make it have, like, tyres? Using a texturing tool. That could be interesting, couldn't it? So what I'm getting at, really, I mean, I think, Maria, you did a thing a while back where we did the uh, work holding session. Could you use some of these in the project? So we did the car to use things like the bottle stopper. Rubber. It's got more uses. So, again, with this, it might be nice to use some texturing tools later on. What I want to try and give you is those basics of get it out, have a play with it. A few months' time, we'll go down and push you a little bit further to say, have a go at this, Okay. Getting those basics is so important, all right? So we've got lovely text on there. Now, 
I did say I'm not going to play too much of colour, all right? Um, we do have these Chromecraft wood dye pens, okay? But even something as simple as doing this, and I know Carl Wynn did your spinning tops a while back. You could airbrush this in. That will add. I'm just going to bring that up a little bit now. I've only done the two. But even that just highlights that. We could go with some lime and wax. You could spray it if you've got your airbrush. A uh, black dye would be fantastic. It's quicker drying off the airbrush is the thing that kind of puts me off with the, the brush this morning. You could lime and wax it. Wipe off the excess. Shows that up beautifully as an effect. Okay. So adding colour can be good. If you do something like African blackwood, could be really good just to then use a gold or silver gilt cream. I've seen those done as well. All right, let's get our reposition a minute. Colin's got another question. Uh oh. Okay, so this is from Hodgepodge. Um, does the round cutter have to be used in a cove? Sorry, does the does the round cutter have to be used in a cove? No. No. We can get away with you. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, and Turn from Tree just wanted to thank you very much for your help on the 4224B um, and the two more taper carrier for the sea jaws this yep. morning. You okay. answered that. I right. just want um, to say thank you. I Apparently think you were I know great what that is. We're going to have a look. All right. If you've done the picture, all I really want is a picture at the front of the chuck because me and Colwyn think we know what it is. And then we're going to educate a few people. Okay. So let's just skim this off. So can we go back? Let's have a look. Camera two, I think. Mate. Okay, good. I'm going to skim this off again. All right. And again, like I said, this is just really playing. It's nice just to have that asset. You haven't got to panic too much. Again, we're working mainly end grain on this at the moment. So it'd be fantastic for box lids. So nice and gently clean it up. You could actually, if you're going to do your pattern on here, sand that at this stage if you want a nice flat surface i'm going to do a mixture of things now so we're going to do a little hollow in the middle a little bit bigger so that splay tool's doing the work there just going to do ball cutter in the center so we're setting up our tall rest height again where can we get into again check where it spins Maria, you said about that simple thing of if you present it wrong, depends on how you present it wrong. Square, the cutter isn't going to go round. So if I do that, the ball sits still. The minute I bring my hand around towards my body, the ball will go round. So you can't push it in directly square to the headstock. Got to have some kind of angle somewhere. That square just doesn't work. That doesn't go round. No matter what I do, even if I come out outside diameter, the peripheral speed obviously going a bit slower out there, quite nice, just to still don't go around. The minute I bring my hand out, yes, you get a turn. If I drop it, we can make it turn. So, just those simple things of what I've done there can be quite reassuring to play with when you start. Um, I have seen cutters bent. Why? Come in too steep. And if you come in from underneath, so you drop your handle right up like you would with a scraper. That can be problematic, can really snatch. What you've got to remember is this is quite a small cutter on a smaller shaft. So got to think about it that way. So into the middle. Speed, bring it down again. Gives me time to react a bit. We're going to be quite steep. I'm going to come in a little bit here. We should get a parallel line. Nice and firm. Give it time to cut. Back out, we're showing a set. I'm going to change the cutter now. So just pull that out. Square one. Okay. So you've got that nice squarish cutter. Now we can do a couple of things. I need to be up just a little bit with the tour rest. So I'm setting the tour rest probably to help you guys about nine o'clock on our clock base if I look at it. Need to come back fractionally. So I can get onto here. Again, I can present the side corner. So I've got the tool directly at me, 45. We'll get an edge. It's quite detailed. I'll bring you up in a minute. You'll be able to see. If we bring the handle on and we bring it, whoop, I'll fight it. And I've got to be nice and firm. 
I can also move it forward very slowly. Not too apparent on there at the moment. So I'm pushing it towards the centre and making a longer pattern. Again, you'll see in a second, I'll bring you up. It's going to cross over a bit now. What happens if we come out the other way? Make a line. Going to come down a little bit with the toe rest now. Nearer the middle. Push it firmly. Swap round again. You can hear it cutting, going round. Last one. Let's see if we can get something in here. Got a problem on there, not going round, so not quite presented right. I'll show Maria that in a minute. Just going to do the brush off. Move the thing up again in a minute, the camera up so you can get closer, see what's going on up in here. Find the mark on my light bag. Cohen can put that on in a minute. Number four, look. Okay, so different patterns on there to what we just had. Very different shape. We can get longer spirals. Hoping that shows. I think maybe if I grab the blue again. Let's just do a tiny bit. I'm going to do all of it. Just to highlight where we are. I'm going to make it easier, Jason. Come on. Just to highlight that effect a little bit more. Hoping that helps you see that long spiral. Okay, would have been good to spray this little bit. Okay, you can see that kind of effect. So you can even move it forward to create a longer pattern. That takes a bit of, a bit of thinking about where your hands are. You've got to push it. There's a bit of resistance. You're pushing it across. Unlike the clown tool, this is more of a cutting tool because it's actually got that. That's a bad way of phrasing it because I know we're watching the clown thing when we play with it last week. You're getting a shaving off. You're actually using a rotary burr cutter. They are sharp. Okay, so they are cutting. Cohen? Yeah, um, great timing actually because Malcolm wants to know could you get a crisscross pattern? Um, he was saying by reversing the lathe, but I guess it'd be by moving the handle. You can get it. Takes a little bit of doing, okay? And the thing you've got to try and get right for that is your angle of the tool approach. Like we did with the crown one last week, you're setting up the same angle from both sides. I have a go on a minute. You can get a nice herringbone effect. That's quite fun. All right, so we're going to play around and see what else we can. All right, so we'll come back with that. So straight one or square one. Can be in this if you like, from my experience to play around with, a little bit harder to do. So, Maria, you said about does it catch or doesn't it spin? I presented on there, didn't quite spin when I was nearer the centre. So, I had to change my hand angle. And so simple just to knock things off. Could keep the square one for a minute. Then we're dropping our speed down. See if we can do some of what you asked then. So, onto there, it goes round. Got to give it time to work. Other thing, how hard you push in will affect what you get as a pattern. Now, I don't know. I've got room for here. I can get in there. Okay, get you just in a little bit closer with that. Gonna fight with this with the handle. I haven't quite got enough room possibly for the tail stop. I need to come back to get me back in there a bit. Now the other thing this is good for using on plastics. So you can do your pen blanks if you like. You could do a grip area pewter copper, so soft metals. Again, that brush is about cleaning that out. Got to be a natural bristle. Don't go using anything plastic. Now we have on there quite a textured effect. Colwyn can see it probably better than what he's got as a screen. I'm hoping that sort of shows you get a crossover effect. That takes a little bit of thinking about approach of the tip is important now on what we've just used there we're using a pencil this corner right on the edge of the tool 
it can be a little bit tricky to come on. If you come on too high, it wants to kick it out. So if you drop your handle back too far, it can be quite scary to start with. Um, and you'll find there's a bit of resistance. It's almost having that little bit of nerve to keep it going and see what happens. Let's see if we can move. Just can move the camera back again. Just need a bit of access to get into there. Tourist back out, speed back down. Lots of things to remember on this. Speed can be the important part, just to give you time to react and make it a little bit safer. I'm a little bit high on my tourist, so we're going to come down. My left hand here really working. You can go finger and thumb. And push nice and firmly now. I should get almost like quite fine starry effect in here. Just from pushing in firmly. If I can bring it round to me a bit, which means I've got to change my grip. A bit more open because I've tilted. If we can drop it down, and it can be good to just get it started. Lower. Got to fight with that bit just to get it in. Should get longer as an effect. So we can make the length of the cut longer. Uh, in reality, the middle, just that we came on square, will be square to the centre. Each time we've lowered the handle, we're getting a longer effect again. Last little one, and then we'll do Carwin's question. This one, I can come really low and I can get it to spin. And hold it. Should get. We're going to highlight where you are. I just want to move you back. I've got a pen line on the lay bed so we know where the camera is focused. Much longer line down through here. All right. So you can play around with changing what you get as a length. Just by changing the approach angle of the handle, pressure, all those things come into this. It's quite a light tool. You need a little bit of pressure to keep it there. Colwyn. Yeah, Marie is just asking, if you felt the first pass, the cut didn't go deep enough, could you re-go over it? Would it pick up the same cut or make a mess? You can. You've got to be able to pick it up. And that means the problem with normally with that, if you think about what we've done, we've taken the knife off, turned it off. It's probably, all right, take the tool back out. Might move the tool rest. You've got to pick up that same angle. Biggest consideration I would say, with if you're thinking about that bit, hold it there, give it time to cut. Don't be impatient. Different materials will also play different ways. So the tulip wood I know we, when we played with last week, it's quite nice. It's something I've got as a bigger size so you get to see more in here than having something that's two-inch diameter. I want is something a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. If it's too soft a material, it will still cut it, but it's probably likely to go in further quicker. So material density will play a part. Boxwood's going to be different again. We'll cut it nice and cleanly, but I might have to hold it there a bit longer. So all those little considerations need thinking about. Okay, let's just skim that. Just see if we can do a couple of other patterns then. So you can see how we're playing around with approach of what's going on. Pick those up. Skim it off. Give yourself blank canvas again. Okay, something flat. Come from there. I want to get to. We're going to go, I think, bud cutter for a minute. We haven't played with the bud. So it's that bally shaped thing we said about a bit longer than a ball. I think we have a look on Freylip Cohen. That's just okay. So that one there. I'm just stretching a bit, guys, so we can do a comparison between the ball and the bud. Bud one's a bit longer, comes up more to a point. The ball one is a spear shape, so you get that ball shape. All right, so that's optional extra. The ball is standard. The bud one, again, we can play with different areas. Let's see if we can compare the patterns. Now, we need to be curved to come across to the center. We'll start there, come over to the middle, okay? Go there. Now, I don't know. Probably got access on this bit to get in there. Oh, we might be able to put four on for you. Okay, so we're on there. 
check everything's locked off. The angio wasn't tight, so that was good to do. I'm not going to come right to the edge. I'm going to come up towards where the tip is a little bit more. Okay. Trying to keep the same angle. Trying to push to the middle. So let's go over that question. In fact, I haven't moved it. I haven't lifted it off. I haven't changed my handle. I'm going to go back and forwards a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of that. Hoping you can see that. A lot of texture. Really fine texture on there. It's quite nice. What happens then if we go with something like the square? And we'll go back to our brush. Might need to come round a bit steep with it. We'll have a look. This is one where I really want to get your um, airbrush kit out, Carwin, and have a good... Like I said, this one really will just want to give you an idea of approach stuff. Real basic. Don't get too caught up in what pattern you're going to make, get you to play with, see what's going on. I'm trying to just highlight so you can see a little bit better. Looks a bit messy on there now. Okay. But much finer texture. Now, by using the bug cutter, I can get real fine lines if I keep it square to the center. By we're going to do the same with the ball now. I just really try to compare by well, having the bug cutter coming up. Come on, you go. I'll be free. I'll go reach for the pencil. The bug cutter, due fact, it comes up almost to a point shape on the tip right up here. The further up it comes, the closer together the cutting spines are because you get that shape. The ball, to fact, we're going to use the side to do what we've done now. They're further apart because you haven't got that taper coming right up. We're going to use around here. We'll get a different effect. Colwyn. Yeah, this is uh, from Malcolm Douglas. Um, all, this is on, all this is on end grain. How does it work on side grain? Okay. All right, in a sec. In a sec. Now, most people, I think they're going to use some of this. Definitely things like boxlets. Be fantastic to have something as a pattern on a boxlet. A bit higher, my toe rest will manage. We're getting the. Go do the same as what we just really did. There, got to come that way. Just checking where we are. Height wise, I've got access. Not going to fall off the end of the toe rest. Good. See if we can get this back in, see if it works. Trying to get you a better view of what's going on from there. Again, we're just dropping the speed down. So we're using the side of the ball. I've got to have clearance. Off the edge of the tool. So I'm just matching. we we'll come back once. We should get different textures to what we had on the last one. Okay, can you see it on there? Yeah, does it show? Good. So even something, and all we've done for that is come across nice and parallel. We're not coming in from the angle around there, actually almost around here, as much as I can go. We've got the edge of the shaft here, tape is a little bit, gives you a little bit of access to get in. That's great. But you can get that lovely long spiral pattern. You can imagine if you start, as we did before, maybe breaking it up. Let's have a look at the... Going to come in a bit steeper with this, so I can use the corner, a bit firmer. So on this cut, coming round, almost 45 degrees, so I'm using right on that corner. And we can start adding more texture in on, so you get deeper dots where we've done each of these lines. So if you start putting a colour or a line wax, you'd highlight that, get a lot more pattern in there. Again, that brush, so important. What you've got there looks fluffy. It's amazing we're doing this, how the material flaps off, what you're actually dragging away and what it leaves you can be nice, clean finish. 
All right, come back a bit. That's quite nice, though. I like that. I can see some boxes being done with colour. I need a training session on colour, though. Might have changed a bit of wood in a minute, look. I don't know how what we're going to see from here. We'll see. Might need to move this about for you. Bring that up. Let's see what we get from there. Just trying to see where you're on the camera. Not too much. Probably overhead as well. It's a bit of a shame. I did wonder this. If I come around the edge here, I'm using that slide tool. You could use your spindle gouge if you like. Just need to check now how wide I am, because the ball catcher we're going to use it in here got to fit into that slot. Okay, very difficult to show on there, but you've got the ball on there now. Let's just have a, a reach. Let's see what I can do up here for you. So the ball catcher's got to fit into there. Okay, too much. I know you can just see it on the corner of your vision. Look, I'll bring it back over. Got to fit into there. Now, at the moment, that fits too tight. It's not going to go around. So, if I run the wrist, if I start trying to push it in, it's going to catch the tailstock end of that blank. It's got to be up to spin to go into that groove. All right. So, I want to bring it just open just a little bit more. I'll take it off there. Open it up. Change cutters. Um. <laughs> So well, well, we're talking of just changing cutters. Um, my best tip I can give you for changing cutters: rear F magnets, something to stick them on, so you take them, you know where they're going. Okay, because at the moment now I've got about two inches of wood shavings on the floor, nice fine dusty stuff. That the minute I drop these, you're going to lose them. So if you try and make sure you keep them in something that you're going to look after them, you know where they are. Don't allow them to go rusty. Other thing we found, a little bit of camellia or fine oil when you put them into a shaft makes them come in and out easier. All right? Won't hurt just to help this bit. Because you want things to come in and out of here easily. Won't hurt just to have a little bit of light oil on there. So the camellia oil used for protecting the tools, fantastic for that. Let's see if I can bring that one. I'm just stretching up play with your camera. Bring them round just a little bit. That might be better. Hope. Okay. You're going to see the tool coming into there. No. It's all right. I'm just playing around with the video camera that's hung on the ceiling. I have to be a bit careful because I know if I'm not too heavy-handed, I can pull it off the bracket. All right, mate. You're not going to get it from there easy. You can just see the cut in the corner. Okay. So I'm going to put this in here. Now, we said about bringing this in. I'm now doing 45 degrees across the light bed. Which one do you want there? What was that? Was that the overhead? Okay. It's going to come in from there. Just going to clean up my edge I've got on the back edge now because I know I'm going to chip out. Not a lot of material there. So I think with this one, just to help the guys out, I'm going to do this. Well, it should be, I think, about there. Can you see the edge one there? Which one you want there for a... Okay. I'll bring them down. That's good there. Might sit on four now, Colin, as well. Look. Can you see that? Cut in there. So we've got a spiral in here. It's a nice clean. All right. So you can do that side grain thing. Now, let's go come back a little bit. It is worth playing around with, as we said. You can do different cutters. Just going to do across there. Colin's got his hand up, so I need to do that one in a minute. Good. A little bit fast now. Full one is definitely the easier one to start with. So I'm getting a nice bit there, a bit fluffy. Right, okay. I'm going to change because I know I've got my next kind of question. Let's take that out. 
Chuck can come off. Now, this is going to be a learning curve for me. What are we going to get if we put a bowel blank on? Which kind of relates to, I think, a little bit of that question of, you're really doing end grain. What about... So this is cross grain. So we're going to have a look in a second. Colin, what have you got, mate? So um, John's asking, is it always the same speed? Is it what, sorry? Always the same speed. And what is that speed? I try and work about 800. I found it's a good speed to work out. Even with an instruction DBC, they tend to say about 800. Okay? Doesn't have to be spot on 800. But the other thing, it puts you in control. If you're too fast and you get anything grab at 2,000 RPM with that little cutter, you're likely to bend it, as in the cutter or break it. Whereas if you go slower... You've also got time to react to anything, all right? Don't let that put you off as it's a dangerous thing. It's just a good speed to work at, all right? You've got to remember the peripheral speed in the center is faster than the outside edge. Sorry, slower in the center, faster on the outside edge. You've got to think about that as well, all right? And just to add to that, John, yes, give it, uh, give your smock a little bit of time and that will uh, will become a little bit softer or just undo it a little bit to... And you should find that wears in well. Uh, Maria is just saying, um, uh, other than carving them in by hand, is there a way to get a wider spaced spiral? A wider space as in? Between the Between cuts. them? Or to make the actual effect longer? I think it's between the, between the spirals. Okay. So a wider groove. Not so much on this. Um, the only way you can do that would be to change the angle and then you'll get a longer line, like we showed you earlier. Now, if you want something where we did bigger spacing, I'm bending down to stuff like we did last week, and it just depends on different shapes. The crown texturing tool that we kind of played with things last week definitely give you more spacing in between. It's bigger type of tools, so you'll get more spacing in between. I don't know, Colin, I mean, let's just have a look on three a minute, look. So the patterns on those are quite wide, depending on what we did. So quite interesting to look at. And from my point of view, it's quite interesting that the crown tool will do something. And obviously, the bigger size tool gave me a bigger spiral. Smaller crown tool gave me smaller spiral. This, I can go down in scale yet again, get smaller again, really detailed and crisp. The problem normally with going smaller is getting the detail cleanly. That does it because it's actually working on a rotary bow and a cutting edge. So that's something to kind of take on, think about, you know, what do you want to work on? If it's going to be something bigger, um, and Colin, you can vouch for this. Nick uses a mixture of all three to do this. So he would do the outside of his bowl with a bigger crown. He'd do this small bit here. Does an inlay in the middle, use it the L, because you're using different areas. So the center inside would be the L. Bigger crown or saw be tall out on the edge. Different things in different areas just to get the effect he wants. Especially out here. All right. Another question. Was that the way? Right. Okay. Good. So I just thought you were your arm. So on here, let's just have a quick look. First thing then, where are we? Speed. Not bad. I'm just going to press a button down on there. Center. Want to be out there. So this is cross grain, bow blank stuff. Again, haven't played with doing this yet, but I knew it was going to be one of those questions. Parallel there, and again, you could sand it before you start. It gives me quite a fine detail towards the middle. Going to go straight one. Too high. Need to come down a little bit because I want to get the corner tip right in there. I don't know if I can bring... I don't know where that will come up to. Right into there for you. That's quite nice. You can hear it going down. Not too firm. Different noise out there. Holding it, giving it time to cut it nicely. We can maybe push this forward on the tour rest a little bit. Not expecting this to be as good on this because you've got that cross grain effect. I know with the crown tools, when I've done stuff and looked at stuff, there's the advice of direction of feed of the wood can affect what you're going to get on here. So you try and keep it squarer when we did to bring back into reality what we did last week. Crown tool to do this, I would be square, not tilting to come across here because you get that cross grain. Point tool, 
We could clean up those shoulders. We could go back to a ball. Going round nicely. Again, we can do shoulder on here makes it easier just to define things, clean it up. So that point tool is really good. Get in there. Brush. So I'm going to predict out here, this bit out here with pencil is going to look messy. A little bit fluffy. Not bad, as I thought, though. Light wisp, maybe a bit of sandpaper just on the edges, or my V lines could have come over a little bit. But we've actually got some fact in there. Worked right, but very close together. What we'll about out here then? What happens if we come out the edge? How much do you see? Okay. Carl, what you got? So, at an eight or 2000, he's saying, is it possible to do these smaller spirals on harder timbers like laburnum? So you could do a spiral, you could do details on there, things like your spinning tops, everything else, great for small stuff. So my tendency with this is smaller detail stuff. Things that you're going to struggle, you know. There's a little bit of a comparison with size, isn't there? So you kind of get the idea. Um, I will say, you know, I go, I love this as a pattern last week, Okay. So, oh, wow, I can't do that with this. Not that coarse, anyway. We can do something similar. It takes a little bit, okay? So different patterns, different places. That actually dyed black with some lava wax on the top would look fantastic. But even on there, that, that just, oh, wow. Okay? So different sizes of project will relate to what you're going to do with different texturing tools. Even when we went and did the carving one a while back, same thing applied. So on here, we can do bow on there. I'll push nice and firm. Get our brush clean. I think that's... I think you can see the edge up on here. That looks nice. So you could do a whole range of different things. Um, the whole idea of this is a video, really, the fact it came from a while back where someone emailed in, say, could you show us different texture? And if you think I did that carving while a, a while back, so last week was crown. This week I thought we'd do this just to see what we get. I've been a learning curve from my point of view just to play around with. See if we can do a longer spiral, pushing it forward gently. Then cross grain's not always the best thing to try this on. Okay, that, that looks quite nice. Now let's just do a slight clean up. But, so that's a similar spiral apart more on the edge of the bowl, a little bit more on the V. Get the brush, that's the important bit. Give it a bit of a quite nice spiral. Now if I drop back just a little bit. I'm not going to play with the camera lens because it's more accurate. But similar sort of, you know, you can see much closer together. The detail of what you're getting really relates to the size of that tool. Quite important to understand that smaller tool is going to give you a smaller spiral. Other question, which I expect, Cohen, let's go back to main screen just for a minute. Question I had years ago from customers when we worked in the shop and people with us. Is there a bigger cutter that goes in the little elf? No. But I could, I could get a bigger diameter straight cutter yeah, but the shank probably won't have the stop on, which I said about down on here. Let's have a look, Cohen. Let's go down to four for a minute. Right. So it's got that shank that I said about just grabbing the pencil. That's quite an important part here. That protects the bearing inside. So when it goes in, goes to there, pushes in, that stops it going too far. There is magnet that stops it falling out. That's important. All right. You could get possibly a bigger cutter. The problem with more or bigger cutter is more leverage on what you're doing. You're more likely to bend the shaft. 
that was a weird question I had a while ago. A guy looked up and said, oh, I've got a rotary hem piece I use for like my Dremel. Right. Couldn't I use that instead of buying this thing? You can, but do you want your rotary hem piece to work for your Dremel when you want it? Because in reality, you're putting quite a bit of pressure onto this to get it to cut. You need something to grip that's got enough. Okay. Um, to give you an idea, this. Uh, come on, let's go. Okay. That's good. That's the brass bar inside it. That's about giving you strength and leverage to do the job. So if you go with your, your Dremel handpiece and start doing this, you're going to probably mess up the bearings on your Dremel handpiece. And it's probably more expensive than the handle for this. So personally, buy yourself something that's going to do it and protect your other nice tools. Carwin, what have you got? So a question from Frederick here. Um, uh, he's saying, would it be better to use a brass brush as opposed to the normal fiber brush? Yeah. I can't do that yet. All right. Later. All right. I haven't played with hairbrushes for about three or four years. No, more than three or four years. Okay. Brass brush. Brass brush. Oh, okay. Um, no, brass brush will do more damage. Sorry. All right. So I thought you said airbrush. Right? Brass brush. The problem with the brass brush, if you've got softer fibers in the material, ash is a good example, you'll brush out those fibers. Okay. So as much as you'll clean up the effect, you're also damaged the grain around it. So the hog's hair brush being that sort of bristled will remove the fluff, but not damage the soft fibers in the wood. Spring growth, if you really want it as technical term. So no, okay, I would go with, all right, go with a little brush, natural bristle. They're quite easy to get hold. We even sell a pack of 50 paint brushes, I think. All right? I even cut them down. I cut the bristles off occasionally using my hand plane blade. So it can be good to do, but you need something natural bristle to do it, just to clean it up. All right. Any more, Cohen? Okay. Now, hoping this has given you just enough insight that you kind of gone, I could add a bit of texture. Simply. I didn't want to go too overboard in this and scare the life out of you and kind of go, yeah. A couple of good pointers in there is when you start, you're going to start with the ball cutter. Definitely the easiest sort of thing to go with. Start playing around with what happens with simple thing on there. If I bring it in square, nothing goes round properly. If I tilt it and I get a bit of angle, the bearing or the ball will travel. Do that before you even switch the label on can be really good. You'll get an idea of approach. Dead square, not going to work. Got to have a bit of angle, a bit of tilt. Find out where the limitations are because there is only so much you can have. If I come down too steep there, still not going to work effectively. Okay, you end up with parallel ring marks, if not careful. We've got to have a bit of tilt. So that's something worth thinking about. Start off with something as some scrap wood just to get you up and going. Have a play, a few little coves. The little cove cutter on here is fantastic, it's more controllable than a little spindle gouge, just to go in and round to that cove. Okay, it's almost like round nose scraper, but different shape. Okay, sharp diamond file across the top. Point tool gives you nice, clean, accurate little lines either side of. More detailed than you can get for that. I use it for a few other things on some of the box lids I make. Really nice to get in between where I can't get a skew right down in. Can be a great little tool to play around with. And it needs that thing of practice. Like any of these things we've shown you, it takes a bit of practice. Um, I practiced a little bit this week. Last week was even more durable with the crown being just banging these discs off, playing around with patterns and going, oh, wow. So can be great to do. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'd love to see some of you at Basingstoke Saturday. Okay, so a big robust tour. If you want to come and have a look, come and see what we're up to. We will be back next week. Uh, Cohen, what have you got next week? What have you got on Tuesday? Can you remember? Oh, I can't. What are we doing next? On Wednesday, we're going to talk about chuck jaws. Um, Cohen's got salt and pepper meals on Tuesday. So that's a bit of seasoning for you. So Wednesday, we're going to talk about some chuck jaws. Thursday, I think I've got Japanese hand sauce. Uh, that's going to be fun, isn't it? A Japanese hand source. What do I know? I've got to do a bit of research and a bit of playing around for you. Okay, so hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again. Bye then.